right, we'll call the meeting to order at 2.02. Are there any disqualifications from any of the commission members? Hearing none, we have a quorum of all five members, so we are met with that. We can now take a motion to approve the agenda as presented. I make a motion we approve the agenda. I second it. Okay. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Motion passes unanimously. And then next is approval of minutes from the, oh gosh, January 23rd. It's been a long time since we yes, met. it's been a long time. Mm -hmm. So uh, the January 23rd um, meeting, if you want to take a minute just to familiarize yourselves with that. And when someone is ready, we will take a motion to approve. Would anyone like to make a motion to approve the minutes? I'll make a motion to approve the minutes. Okay. I'll, I'll second it. And there's a second. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? The minutes pass unanimously. Okay. On to new business inventory of historic properties. I'm going to turn this over to Jenny, but we are looking at adding 209 Putten Ridge Road and 379 Poplar Branch Road to update our inventory. So Jenny. Yeah, thank you. Um, I did receive some inquiries from the property owners of both of these properties. They were interested in potentially applying for a local landmark status. And we know the first step is you have to be on the inventory to be eligible to submit those applications. So they both expressed interest in having their properties added to the inventory. Uh, this is this was in your agenda packet as well. The first one is 209 Puddin Ridge Road. Um, According to our tax records, it was built in 1954, so it does meet the requirement of being at least 50 years old. Um, you can see the location here on Puddin Ridge Road. It's um, not quite four acres of property and the house on the property. And then uh, some elevations from the tax records are, are shown here of the property. And then... Um, we can take them one at a time, or you can just generally talk about both. How do you want to do yeah. it? Let's take it. Um, uh, what's the little board? Look? Do we want to? Let's talk about both, and then we'll circle. Okay. Around. Yeah, let's go through them both. All right. So that's that's the first property. It's called. Um, it's known as I believe it's East. What's that? Edgewood. I'm Edgewood. Sorry. Edgewood. Sorry. Edgewood. Edgewood. Yeah. Yeah. Is the name of the property, and then the second property is 379 Poplar Branch Road. Um, it's owned by Susan Twitty. According to the tax records, it was built in 1910, so it certainly meets the requirement of being at least 50 years old. Uh, it's located on Poplar Branch Road, uh, almost three acres of property, and here's an elevation of the front of the building. I think that's all I have. Yep. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. So the only thing before us today is just to add, if we want to add these to the inventory, correct? Correct. But with the um, understanding that most likely these two would move forward and make application, we would expect. It's possible. That, mm -hmm. Sure. Once you're on the inventory, you can make application. Okay. All right. Um, any thoughts on any of these houses or any discussion? I would just like to make one comment. Um, People keep saying, well, why was my house not on the mm -hmm. inventory? We were told by the uh, Department of Archives and History, the Preservation Office, that we had, when we had houses that were of a generic form, that we, unless there was something that was really outstanding about those houses, they were not to be listed individually. And so you're going to find a lot of ranch-style houses um, craftsman style houses, uh, typical uh, A-frame type houses, or uh, some of the one, uh, the regular, uh, what we think is the typical Curry Tuck farmhouse that are not listed for the very simple reason that there was nothing architecturally that made them stand out from a class of houses. So uh, people keep saying, well, why wasn't my house listed individually on the survey 
That's the reason, because it was of a generic type that we talked about in the inventory as being general types of houses that were found in Curry Tech County. And so that may answer some questions that people have. However, we're also going to have issues moving forward because the inventory was done about 06 to 08. Mm -hmm. So it had to be 50 years old or older right. at that point. So every year you potentially we'll have, have a have new crop of houses that are fact, eligible. In fact, uh, one of the things that we're facing in the National Register is a lot of um, what we would call uh, just regular ranch style mm -hmm. houses, uh, when, especially when we're doing districts, are now becoming eligible. Right. And my thought on that, too, is the Museum of the Admiral just had a program on, um, there's a term for it, I think I'd send it to some of y'all, um, the kind of small 1950s houses mm -hmm. and how there really aren't many of them left. Right. And they're somewhat being, they're somewhat getting considered architecturally significant right. mm -hmm. because they were kind of a post-war style house mm -hmm that has been typically torn down oh. and they're kind of a disappearing inventory. Same so thing. although they haven't typically been considered yeah. significant because it spoke to kind of a post-war movement, people are considering them much more significant now. Well, the same thing is like at the beach, the what we call just the regular salt box houses mm -hmm. sure. that were built up very quickly um, for a convenient house to have a beach house. Uh, those are now getting to be considered uh, historic and, and therefore can and possibly could qualify for the National Register. Mm -hmm. So what makes these both bungalow houses? I mean, the Twitty house looks so much different. Than, mm -hmm. Yeah, that's not a bungalow. But that's listed as on here as bungalow. <laughs> in the tax so records. My, the tax <laughs> records. My guess is that's a tax qualification as opposed to an architectural yeah. qualification from our standpoint. Because Edgewood, I would certainly call a Cape Cod. And I wouldn't, take, I wouldn't take these tax records as gospel either. Right. Because mine were wrong, too. So, yeah. like, this one says 1910, but I yeah. bet you anything that's earlier. And yeah. A, oh, bung yeah. Yeah. a bungalow just means just a normal wooden, you know, house. So yeah. yeah, architecturally, yeah. It's, yeah. You think of the small little squat yeah. you know, house for a bungalow. <laughs> Okay. Any other discussion? I, I'm not familiar enough with the area to know how unique these are. Um, I mean, this Victorian here, I'm going to say it, it's probably late mm -hmm. Victorian. That's fairly unique. Like, we don't have a lot of those here. Like, that's Queen, Queen Anne style, clearly. Mm, sure. I mean, it's been altered. You know, it doesn't have its original windows. It could possibly be vinyl wrap on it. Um, the porch may be original, mm -hmm. you know, can't really tell. I don't think so. It, it, to my first look, it doesn't look original, but, you know, people did modify designs to, to cut costs, so it could possibly, <laughs> but that's easy enough to tell. Sure. Um, so, I mean, that one looks unique enough to me, and it's, it's interesting, they still have their chimney. I'm jealous of their chimney. Mm -hmm. Um... The other one is a beautiful house. The the 50s house is beautiful, but is it is it unique? I cuz I feel like I've seen a lot of those in Chesapeake and Virginia Beach, but I'm not so familiar with mm -hmm. Currituck. I think they're becoming unique. Mm -hmm. Even in Virginia Beach, I mean, if you go around Princess Anne Courthouse, it looks like a lot of the older uh, 40s and 50s homes mm -hmm. all leading up to the courthouse, they're going to bulldoze all of them. Right. And I mean, and older, because they're all abandoned, so I figure they're on the wrecking ball slate. So I think as we see this, I mean, it to me, it was important as a style in 54, you know. Yeah, this is this is a beautiful style. This and Cod style. I mean, I really, I have no problem adding either one to the well, and we're straying, inventory. We're straying a little bit outside. Today, the business before us really is, it's just inventory. do we include these in the inventory? Yeah. Not There's not yeah. an application. Right. Yeah. I mean, like, but, is it right. super common? Like, if there are a hundred of these in Currituck County, like, you know. I, I will say. I don't know. Just my opinion on it, on, you know, 54 Cape Cod, is that there are not a lot, mm -hmm. and there were not a lot of significant 
you know, 2,400 square feet in the 50s around here is a pretty significant oh, yeah. house. Yeah. You know, and that in, so yes, I would say in Virginia Beach or more suburban setting, maybe not. But here you had, especially in Moyoc, kind of a rash of building post war. Okay. Um, you had a lot, like my house that I have beside yours, a lot of two bedroom, one baths. When you have a lot of those, or when you're going down Pudding Ridge Road, you know, a lot of the smaller yeah. stuff on Pudding Ridge Road. I think this would have been significant at the time frame for this county for the 50s. Okay, that's good to If know. that makes sense. As opposed to, you know, Virginia Beach where there was more, or Princess mm-hmm. Anne County at that time, where there's substantially more wealth. Yeah. So I, I, I doubt there were very many of these because I think it speaks to somebody that was relatively affluent it, in yeah, a rural area. For sure. It's bigger than the average in that time period. Well, right. my, my question is, Jenny, um, we had the original survey was done, and it had specific guidelines meeting the local government standards. Uh, we're now reaching the point where um, do we, as we expand it, what are the criteria for adding it to the survey? For adding it to the inventory? Is it just that we th- look at this house and say, this is a nice house, therefore add it to the survey, or this is one of, we can add add categories? I don't know an answer to that question. That's a question yeah. for you and the local government commission. Yes. Well, we established our criteria here. We you know we have our own criteria, don't we? I don't believe it's a state criteria. Ooh. I think it's we have our own. We don't criteria. necessarily have criteria for adding to the inventory, okay. to my knowledge, other than it has to be Age. at least fifty years mm-hmm. old. So. And, and as we know, adding it to the inventory does not even imply that it will become a landmark property. Right. Mm-hmm. I understand so, that. Um, but it does give these owners the ability to explore that option sure. and, and, and apply if, if they choose. Um, and you do have interest from both of these owners. Sure. So, Do we need to establish criteria or does the county need to establish criteria? I mean, this commission could establish some criteria for evaluating properties to add to the inventory if you felt like you wanted a little bit more um, guidance for making the decision Mm -hmm. to add it. At one point, though, it's easy to add to an inventory, but if, let's say, something did have historical importance people didn't know until they started doing their research, then we've already said no, we're not adding it to the inventory and potentially missing out something important because that research hasn't been done yet. Well, and and while I think we were discussing, you know, 1950s Cape Cod, we're kind of saying, well, at first blush, it's not architecturally significant. And I'm saying, well, my, and my take is, but look at the setting for it. Yeah, that's why I asked about Curitub. So to me, it's yeah, right. right. To, to me, it's it right. So I think, right. So I think if we start getting too specific, and so my my initial thought is, well, what's the risk of adding it to yeah. the inventory? What, I what, think we what's should What's the be, risk of inventory? I think we should be easy going, adding things to the inventory, because you know things could come in, into light with research or whatever. Mm-hmm. Things could change. You know, there could be ten of these houses, and then a year from now there could be one. Right. You know, sure. so. So I think we should be kind of sure. relaxed with inventory. Well, I definitely think the 1910 house that they're disappearing. I mean. Oh, they're. So, I mean, and my argument with Edgewood, and this is not to the architecture, but it it would be somewhat to the social history. And this would be my initial thought on it if I were writing the application would be, yes, it's a typical 1950s Cape Cod. But, you know, since I grew up behind that house, I do know the history Mm -hmm. of it somewhat. You you had a World War II vet who left another part of North Carolina. It kind of speaks to that post-war, you know, raising a family, moving. You know, post-World War II, you have people moving out of their hometowns for the first time, going other places. He's managing the Jarvis Farm. You know, Mrs. Edge was from Greensboro. So you have people moving around in kind of a post-war thing. So I think there's a social history aspect that kind of speaks to that time and place that's important with the house too so i think you can kind of go i think isn't one of our criteria having to do somewhat with that social history and not just i know it's architecture and significant i don't really think uh, so person. i think it's people like important people no that's one of that's one of several criteria well it, it's 
so it can yeah. have architectural significance or historical significance. Um, yeah. Or archaeological certain sure. significance. Sure. And um, and significant person locally, not necessarily of statewide importance. Potentially. Right. I mean, yeah. That, that, I mean, it has to go to state. Yeah. Ultimately, it's at your discretion. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Um, and truly, it's at the board of commissioners' discretion. Because I mean, I, I would say that the Boswood House, Mr. Boswood, was not of statewide significance, but I think he he raised mm -hmm. the level of local significance. Mm, absolutely. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, the fact that he was a member of the General Assembly, well, every county had a member of the General Assembly right at that time. So, like, you can't say that's significant across the state. Mm -hmm. But a le local legislator's house is a little more significant within that community context. Mm -hmm. So, any other thoughts? All right. Well, I feel like on... Um the Twitty House, I know that he is a, a carpenter, and whatever they've done is probably top-notch to that house, and probably the inside is pretty much how it was. I mean, you know, preserved kind of thing. I don't know. I've never been in there, but I'm just yeah. thinking he's a pretty good... Well, it good, could be. He's a pretty good like and modern, and we couldn't yeah. care. So. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Beautiful door transom. Cool. I mean, it does... I, I mean, I really think it at least should be on the inventory. Yeah, for sure. And then when they fill out the application, we may find that it does have. Yeah, I think I I personally think both should be on the inventory. Okay. Well, I agree that both of them need to be to be added to the survey list, but I think we need to. Um, again, we need to realize that our survey, when it was done, was done with different criteria, and what we're looking at now. And I don't know if the local government's criteria has changed. Do you know if it has? I'm not. I'm not aware of it of it changing. Um, again, when we get these landmark reports, mm -hmm. we're required to send them to the State Historic Preservation Office, and they're required to review and provide comments. Sure. But mm -hmm. we aren't required to if they if if their opinion is that it's not significant architecturally or historically. Um, that doesn't mean that that we can't make the decision that it is to our county. Right. So. I mean, one thing I go to with this, just to think through, and I know that this has been kind of a debate around historic preservation, too, is you have potential manufactured properties at this point that are 50 years old mm -hmm. or older. And most people would argue that that's not architecturally significant. But again, I kind of go to, well, if you look at it in context, yes, that, that one building may not be architecturally significant, but if you're looking at it in a social context, you know, if it's in maybe one of the first large affordable housing tracks in the county, right? And you're looking at that or something like a Tolls Bay colony that was kind of, you know, filled marshlands and was kind of the start of development. Maybe it is architecturally significant for the county. You know, it's, I mean, are we only going to say that high architecture how, homes of a certain kind of class and wealth status are, we're going to consider? I, I think we, I think we have to say rarity is what matters and the things that are more mass produced sure. like that, you know, otherwise we're going to look at a major problem 50 sure. years from now. <laughs> well, but how many 50 year old manufactured houses exist? I mean, there's probably not that many in existence. So there is probably a rarity argument there. I guess that depends on where you where you are. Sure. Yeah, because I mean I've been in sure. areas where it's just miles sure. of brick ranches. <laughs> you know, they're all identical. Sure. It depends on the you type know. of ranch. If they're mid-century yeah. modern, based on a Frank Lloyd Wright. Uh, yeah, design. yeah, but I'm, we're saying like the, the, the you know the uh, big ranches. <laughs> mid-century modern in this county would make it pretty much unique. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, there's probably not many of them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm just thinking ahead because now we have McMansions and now we have identical housing and giant tracts of land, you know. So, like, I think rarity, you know, would be our determination 
if it's not it's significant too. architecturally or becoming if not, rare if it's not yeah so that the application the overview says a local historic landmark property is a property so designated by the board of commissioners as a property of special significance in terms of its historical prehistorical architectural or cultural importance and that possesses integrity of design setting workmanship materials feeling and association property owners can apply to have their property designated as a landmark okay well good that kind of knocks all the questions right. on the survey they just have to be built 50 years ago is that what you're correct. saying correct yes I mean, let them all let them work it out yeah <laughs> I mean it is <laughs> and then we'll see who goes through the process of it is of something though to think about long term as we move forward though in terms of like I grew up in Quail Run I mean that was all built mid 80s mm -hmm. you've got basically identical brick ranches starter homes right but again it spoke to a time and place in 50 60 years i mean at some point those things are going to start getting torn down and 100 years from now well, they probably have some historic integrity right i mean downtown elizabeth city that's all victorian when it was built nobody thought it was important because that's just what you built in 1890 and they were built well sure so that's sure. the big difference i mean 80s could still be built well well, yeah, yeah, some great be, specials yeah. are right. Sure, you know, sure. even so, today, you know, you got that off the house. Side, right? Right? That's our application. Sure, okay. Mm -hmm. But I mean, you it, in 10, 15 years, you're gonna start looking at some 80s ranches that are in this 50 year mark, you know. Yeah. It would be good, you know, to preserve you know, examples of each, but I kind of think it's the kind of thing where you got to get to it and it's going to be rare already. But in the 50s and 60s, the reason mass victorian districts were bulldozed is because people didn't think they were like the this was the same like argument that. made yeah. 60 years ago and why mass sections of cities were bulldozed is because they said well this isn't significant nobody wants yeah, or you could consider the so, rate of decline yeah. sure you know yeah sure. so i think i think sometimes 50 you've got to look 50 years in the future yeah. and say what will those people think about this and imagine what they bulldozed yeah. what right. they tore down to put up those victorian houses right mm -hmm. Some cases they were because those are our marching things. orders right there. Right. Thank you for putting this on. And that's for a landmark, but this is just yeah. for the survey that we're talking. Yeah. I mean, the cultural importance I think is a pretty wide category. An integrity of design, setting, workmanship, materials. And Jenny, do we know? Do you know if they are going to pursue going any further than this, or just at this point they want to put it on the survey? Yeah. Um, both expressed interest, um, and I've heard from them multiple times. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, I haven't spoken with Mrs. Miss Twitty recently, but I did speak with the owner of Edgewood recently. Okay. And I wonder if um, property itself. I wonder if either important. property has any historic outbuildings to include with it, because on the map it kind of looks like there's something, but I can't tell. Edgewood, Edgewood. has buildings it's, but i think they were it's all more new than the yeah, yeah, okay. as, uh, yeah. i don't Maybe think there's just, any contributing structures on either property well possibly the little tea house might be uh, mrs edges mrs at Ed edgewood at edgewood there is a tea house that what is a tea house it's well they that's just what it's called it's a small building that uh more like more like a I don't want to say a dollhouse, but it was used for the children. But they like had a playhouse. Playhouse, but it was built. But for adults. As, oh, no. for adults. Yeah. Yeah. For, uh, Mrs. Like Mrs. Edge. Garden was, Folly? Mi Mrs. No. Mrs. Edge was very much into English history and English teas. And that house was used as a, that little house was used as a, I don't know what you call it. Entertainment. It's like entertainment. It's entertainment. Yeah, like ladies in to have teas. From the, from the and, same era as the yeah, house? Yeah. Um, I think it probably was built after the house, but I'm not sure. But probably not long after the not, house. I'm, again, I'm talking out of my head. But it wouldn't be 50s, so we couldn't include it, but maybe if it, it may did get on. It may be 50s. Okay. Mm -hmm. Maybe if you did accept this house and you want to add it later, as a, or you as, could do as an as amendment. A little different thing. thing. Mm -hmm. That so is neat. Okay. okay. All right. Any other discussion? All right. So the business before us, remember, is just to whether we want to include them on the inventory or not. Um, 
And I would suggest we just take them both as one singular motion if somebody would like to make a motion. I make a motion that we put 209 Puddin Ridge. 209 Puddin Ridge Road and 379. 379 Poplar Branch Road on the inventory. I second it. Okay. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor, sign. Aye. 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 All opposed? You pass unanimously. Okay. All right. Announcements. Um, the one thing, and I don't know that we need to discuss this, but I'd had a couple people ask us if we were going to do another historic tour this year. Um, I think there's interest in that. I know that we've, you know, yeah. we kind of do a lot of it. So just to think about whether well, there's not time certainly this year, but maybe next year, something we want to give some thought to. So, but it would be nice if we got more on the register too, because it would be nice if we could do a tour of just local landmarks. Yeah. Mm -hmm. it, it was very popular. I think it would be. Mm -hmm. yeah. I wonder why Buckskin, but what? I wonder why those ones that we had on the thing the won't justices. apply. I talked to her about that the other day. I talked to she her was, yesterday. She was one that asked if we were doing the tour again. <laughs> so she was one that had called about that. I mean, that. both of them. Only Kulong is the only one that's, hmm. you know, done anything. She, I talked to her yesterday. She's just worried that she wants to have enough time. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And a little worry there that we would dictate. Yeah. Too much. Oh, some, to, yeah. to be, to be on the historical register. And That's some people come from about, communities where they were much more stringent. Right. And you so know. sometimes they come out of areas that, you know, they dictated paint color and oh, things right. like that. Oh, right. They do that. In this yeah. city. They do that. Yeah. 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 So. so. People have a lot of But it would be wonderful. Maybe that would, this would prod her to go ahead and. Yes. And get the. That and her son get his on there because they're both such amazing homes. Yeah, they are. that would be so cool. They really are. All right. Any other announcements? Any word? I uh, saw that the Joe West house is still standing. That's what I was going to say. It's just and, I've been afraid to look. <laughs> I know. And Long Point sold, I understand. Long Point has been size a different. Uh, oh, you're talking about the house. Okay. Yeah, the house. Yes, the house is sold, and the lady has already talked, uh, uh, is, is interested in restoring it, uh, basically, to to uh, what it looked like in, the, in that era. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, and uh, I'm very excited about the fact that uh, they had n they looked at the property not with that in mind, but then have been convinced in terms of the history and some other things that that might be something they would like to do. This is the one that straddles the two lots, right? Yes. yes. So what are they going to do? The Coast Guard move it to what they, the bought, Coast Guard so they bought both lots. Oh. Mm -hmm. They and bought it's the a historic. It, was it Coast Guard or was it Life Saving Service? At the, it it was, was. I think it predates the Coast okay. Guard. Okay. That house started out as at Long Point, which mm -hmm. really Long Point was not a life saving station. But it was it, part of it. It was, a it was under right. it was under the lighthouse. Yeah. I was doing some more research the other uh, day and found out that their governing body was the light was not the life saving station, but the lighthouse section mm -hmm. of that. So that was there, and then that house was then moved to Coinjock, uh, one of two buildings that were moved off of Long Point, and they are now, uh, it was then used as the Coast Guard station. It was where the park is now. Okay. And then it was moved from there to oh the Harrison's property. I noticed there's an abandoned Victorian across the canal from there. Mm -hmm. What's going on? Do you know the story with that one? What? Do you know the story with that abandoned Victorian? Which one? The it's across the canal. A Victorian across the canal. It's like a round window. Oh, the blue one. It's kind of blue, like the blue one. Yeah. yeah, I know who. It's. Gosh, who uh, was, it? It used to be the was it the Spry's that lived there? Mm -hmm. It's pretty. Um, yeah, I do know who owns it. They were talking about it. going to pick daffodils, and I said, you know, why don't they restore it? They said there's no hope <laughs> or something like that. Mm -hmm. Well, right. you know, I did try to save. I had to try about the Joe West house. I wrote to 
Vic We've Ramsey. All tried. We've all tried. I begs. Mm-hmm. I asked if he had, you know, contacted a newspaper, like, to put something in, like, he take this house. But I never got a reply about that. Yeah. But it's, they said they were going to tear it down in September. They have, the only, the concession they have made is that they are going to get a salvage company in that specializes in architectural salvage and salvage the lintels, the mantles, the, the, hopefully the stairway, the parts that make that house unique. Yeah. As I saw that the salvage store in Elizabeth city closed oh. the ECNA salvage. I don't know if they, any I'm hoping they get down East, else. but I've suggested it to people, please yeah. Yeah. down East is a good one. So. Hmm. When did this, um, the one in uh, Elizabeth City close? I hadn't heard that. Um, six months ago. I'm bad at time, but okay. I, I read something that it, it just recently kind of closed, maybe six months to a year ago. All right. Any other announcements? Ms. Snowden, would you like to talk a little bit about America 250 Committee and oh, yeah. the December um, presentation you were mentioning yesterday? Okay. Um, as you all know, the 250th anniversary of the Declaration of Independence is coming up soon. The actual commemoration started this year uh, in 2024 with a kickoff at Halifax. Uh, it was going to go through the year uh, 2033 because that is when the Constitution was actually uh, adopted. Um, couple things going on. We had a meeting yesterday uh, of the Currituck County uh, 250th Committee. Um, we have received $30,000, which I thought was a pretty good grant uh, for us to have received. Um, and uh, the, the next thing that's coming up, one of the things that we're planning to do um, is have a reenactment of Betsy Dowdy's ride. Uh, all through all four counties, starting in Currituck and ending in Pequimans. And uh, if you know the legend of Betsy Dowdy, you know that she went to Pequimans to General Skinner's house. Um, he was the head of the militia in this area. And then they went to the Battle of Great Bridge. The Historical Society meeting on December the 9th will be by the uh, Great Bridge um, Battle of Great Bridge Museum. Uh, they are coming down and are going to tell us about what they're planning to do, <coughs> excuse me, to recreate the Battle of Great Bridge and celebrate the 250th of that, which is actually December the 7th um, in uh, 2025. And uh, that program is open to the public. Uh, I would love to have lots and lots of people I plan to invite all 17 counties uh, to that meeting. Do we need to move the venue then? No, I don't. I don't. I doubt if we're going. If if we get if we invite the 17 counties, I think we'll have maybe one or two people who may okay. come from each county at we the moment. We're pretty tight. We have well, a big crowd. If otherwise. we do, then we'll. Fe- if I if people tell me they're coming, then I'll. The reason I am inviting all of the 17 counties is doing just a minimum of research on the Battle of Great Bridge. I looked at the uh, pension records for North Carolina, and I found that there were, there were 108, 108 pension records um, that relate, say they fought at the Battle of Great Bridge. And of the 17 counties that surround us, there were at least two or three people from each county that uh, got their pension in 1800 from the Battle of Great Bridge. The interesting thing is there were 19 that got their pension from Currituck County from the Battle of Great Bridge. And plus, that pension was not established until 1800. So by then, a lot of people who fought in the American Revolution may have died. Uh, not everybody applied for pensions, and not everybody, if you had a choice of uh, saying, I bought, fought at the Battle of Great Bridge, and you also fought at the Battle of uh, Guilford Courthouse, you might have s- cited Guilford Courthouse instead of the mm-hmm. Battle of Great Bridge. So I was shocked to find 19 people who 
gave the Battle of Great Bridge as their battle that qualified them for a pension from the American Revolution. And like I said, I was also surprised to find that of the 17 counties that surround us, that at least I had two or three people from every single one of those counties. Something and there was also um, a reference to the group from Halifax that marched to Great Bridge and a reference to uh, Gregory's company of militia that would have been from Pasquotank at that time, but now would have been from what we would call Camden. So the Historical Society meeting is December 9th at no, 7? No, December 7th. I'm sorry. I mean, no, December 7th is a Saturday. It's okay, the 9th. It has to be the 9th. It's the second Monday in December. So December 9th at 7 o'clock at, 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 at the Cray Tuck at, Library at, and Barco. Uh, Barco Library. Okay. But if you want to join the planning for the 250th uh, celebration year, Join us on October 9th, which is a Wednesday at 530 right here in this right and because we can take any ideas. Yes, it's open to anybody in the county who would like to be part of the, the planning process. All right. Any other announcements? I'll just say that you may have noticed we have Sheree Grego here with us this afternoon and she is a planning clerk for our department and uh, she is graciously agreed to uh, clerk help clerk this board. So good. Thank you. And Thank you. We're yes. quite a little handful. And then I, I just wanted to introduce you to Millicent Ott in the front row there. She is a planner two with our department. This is her second week. A so. planner two or T O O? Number two. Okay. I just was yeah. curious. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and also. Okay, I didn't know if you meant a planner also. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Okay. Any other announcements? Any public comments? Hearing none. All right, we can take a motion to adjourn. I make a motion we adjourn. Okay, is there a second? Second. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor, aye. 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 Opposed? We're adjourned. I love